All right, for more on House uh, this, let's go to House Judiciary Chair. Sorry, for more on House Judiciary Chair Jordan demanding answers from the IRS, let's welcome former Treasury Secretary for Public Affairs, Monica Crowley. Hey, Monica, good to see you. Okay, I'm all tongue-tied about the intro, but I'm not on the question. <laughs> How concerned should people be about these harassing House calls from the IRS? You know, the three most fearsome government agencies are the DOJ, the FBI, and the IRS, because they have the power to take your freedom destroy your life and bankrupt you. And in this particular story, we're honing in on the IRS. I mean, all three agencies are completely out of control. But in this story, Brian, what it shows is that the IRS has now been fully weaponized and probably has been since the Obama years against average Americans. And your question to Jerry was a critical one, and I hope we get answers to it, about the political nature of this, if in fact that exists. You know, coming on the heels of Matt Taibbi getting a home visit unannounced by a Treasury agent on the same day he was testifying about government abuse in Congress, this is terrifying. These are the tactics of a totalitarian dictatorship. The American people should not live in fear of their DOJ, FBI, and IRS, which, by the way, we all pay for. <laughs> we yeah. are paying for these government agencies. Exactly. So to live in terror that you might get a knock on the door, this is all the hallmarks of a tyranny. Okay, so I want to go to that paying for this point. In a new Wall Street Journal op-ed, the editorial board says, what in IRS workplace culture gives agents the belief they can do this? Democrats bestowed $80 billion on the IRS last year to empower people like this so-called Bill Haas. Republicans clawed back some of that money in the recent debt ceiling bill, but an IRS that makes threatening house calls deserve to have it all clawed back. Monica, this to me is a critical issue. What we saw here, we will see more of when the IRS has more money and more people to do this. You're from the Treasury Department. You have some familiarity with how the money flows. How do taxpayers get some of this money back so that this doesn't keep happening? Well, you know, the Republican House had a providential opportunity during the debt ceiling arguments and, and debate to claw back all of the $80 billion and they didn't do it. And I guess the argument is it wasn't quite possible. They were able to claw back, claw back some, but not all of it. Look, they had an opportunity to put a stop to this. And you'll recall that I think their very first vote in January mm -hmm. was to defund the standing IRS army that Joe Biden and the White House and the Democrats wanted, 87,000 new agents. Ask yourself, Brian, for what purpose? Not to go after the Elon Musks of the right. world, even though they, they talk about you know making the rich pay their fair share. No, to go after the middle class, and the working classes, because that's where the real money is. Yep. I would add one other point to that. The, the other reason they want a standing army here is to go after political opponents, of course. But we've also heard reports over the last several years that the IRS is massing guns and ammunition. Now, right. when you pay those reports with what we're hearing about unannounced visits by IRS agents backed by the full weight of the federal government. Yep. This is absolutely terrifying. And there needs to be yep. answers. I'm glad that Chairman Jordan is going after answers on this. I, but every Republican should be standing up and demanding answers to this kind of I, thing. We cannot go on like this. Couldn't agree with you more. And to me, the biggest issue is it's not the Elon Musks. It's the average everyday person who just doesn't have the ability to fight it. But fight it, they'll need to because the IRS seems to be coming. We got to leave it there. Monica Crowley, great to see you. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, Brian.